What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here, and we're back with part three today of our HPC uh, cluster provisioning and, and deployment guide. So if you remember, we've already gone through all of those steps to kind of get our head node built and get it all prepped to go. Now we're ready to start prepping Werewolf, the software that will actually provision the nodes so that we can then have them all talk together using the Slurm scheduling software and whatever network share type software we want to build out so that they can coordinate and, and do scientific computations. So today we're gonna to be working in these and probably these steps, and that should be all we do. So let's get right to it. Let's turn that on and turn this off. And there we are, we're at our head node. Now I'm gonna leave it at the head node for the most part, uh, but I will be alt tabbing and kind of going through the commands without switching back and forth and back and forth. So our first command is we need to tell the system about what we will be provisioning for the compute nodes to have for a network interface. And we decided that since this one was getting um, ENS 18, we would give the compute nodes ENS 18. So all this command is gonna do is say, hey, for the ethernet one device in Etsy wearable provision, it's gonna be called ENS 18. So that line's done. And then our next is, we want to make sure that our internal network is up, which we know it is, but we will go ahead and do that anyway. And we know that that, is ENS 19, as we can see. Cool. Can we look again? Yay, it's up. <laughs> All right, next step. The next step is to configure, configure the IP address, add SMS IP slash internal net mask broadcast plus dev SMS ETH internal. I'm not sure I need to do that because that network is already up. We have configured those steps. We don't need to do that. We're good there. So we'll move on to the next step, which is to turn on the HTTPD service, which I think is already on, but we will give it a kick in the teeth anyway. Beast. Okay, that service has been prepped to start. Now we will restart it, and then we will also enable the DHCPD daemon. And then we will also enable the TFTP socket. This is for Pixie booting. And then we will start that service. So now that those are services are enabled, that they will start on boot for the head node, should the head node need to reboot for any reason, um, like updates or things like that. So those services will start and we can even see that they're on now. If we run a net stat, you can see that HTTPD is running here on port 80 and FTP is while well, the socket is on. So I think we have to look at it this way. Or we'll just do it this way. System CTL status TFTP socket. Active listening. Cool. So now we verified that's going. Now we are going to start the actual preparing of creating the image that will get installed when a node boots up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using what's known as a Truth environment, a ch root. I've called it Truth because I'm, I'm lazy like that. So that's gonna be this line right here. So it's basically telling DNF that I want to build a new environment and I wanna call that environment open HPC base compute. This is basically just the Rocky image again built for what okay error parsing dot dot given path is not absolute interesting that must mean i have forgotten something scanning our stuff here let's check the guide we'll go back up a little bit scroll 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 oh yes we missed something here yeah i completely missed three steps and this is why we keep our document up so first we actually have to set that variable that would help, right? So we add this, and then we add this command so that it says, hey, we're going to label this in Werewolf as Rocky9. It's gonna grab some repos, download some stuff. This may take a few minutes. So 
So now we'll add equal to it. Do, 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 do. And then we will copy the open HPC repo from our head node into our new compute image. Bloop. All right, now that that's done, we can go back to our actual commands that we wrote down that we, for some reason, skipped the other one on. So anyway, back to this, do, 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 paste, bang. This will also take a little bit as it installs those packages. And while it's doing that, we'll go get the next one. Uh, the next few commands are going to be copying files that we've created on the head node into the compute node image. Now we do this so that they have matching things um, at, on boot. And we'll also have a system later that Werewolf allows you to do. So if you make changes on certain files, it will sync those changes to all of your nodes. I believe on reboot, so that it, it uh, but I think it will just sync over a certain period of time. I'll need to double check that. All right, so there's that done. And like I said, we're gonna start copying files. So that's just gonna take etsy-resolve.conf and put it into the image resolve.conf so that it matches. Uh, the next one is gonna be etsy password and etsy group. We'll be going into the image so that those match. So user accounts exist on both places. Uh, this is also a time to, so yeah, we wanna overwrite the the current existing ones because they're, they're default. And we want the groups and password, password file, which isn't really a password file, um, after some environmental changes that happened in Linux. And then we will go ahead and install the Slurm client on the compute nodes. And by compute nodes, again, I mean the image. <laughs> All right, and then the next step after that will be enabling the Munge system. Now Munge is kind of like the authentication piece to allow nodes to talk to Slurm. See, there's that error again, which is very weird. Please fix your invocation environment to mount proc instance properly. Proceeding anyway, your mileage may vary. This is not listed in the document anywhere. Um, so I'm curious to see what that's about, but I don't think it's going to matter. But we'll we'll see if it bites us in the butt later. And then we're going to make sure that it enables Slurm daemon, which again, we're going to get that same proc error, but it's going to do it. It makes the sim link. And then next, we have to tell it where the, basically some Slurm options so that when the systems boot, it knows where the Slurm server is, which is just gonna be the SMS IP, which I think is 10.1.1.1. Yeah. I like to double check those things. 10.0.0.1, sorry. So now it will know to connect to the head node when the compute node boots, when it's attempting to start Slurm. And then we'll install the crony, crony, chronomatic, the timekeeping service. And then we will configure this timekeeping service to check in with the HUD node. So even if, even if the head node's time is off, this will keep the compute nodes time matched with the head node, which is important. There's that done. And then we will tell it to configure the kernel that matches the kernel of the head node. We can do this because our compute nodes and head nodes are the same kind of hardware and everything. This would be where you would need to make changes if your compute nodes were running a different like kernel architecture or anything like that. Well, that's interesting. No match for argument kernel 5140427, unable to find a match. So that's the kernel that I'm running. Hmm, why did we get that? That basically tells me that DNF doesn't have that same kernel available. Okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead and do updates. This is probably gonna kick us off a new kernel, which isn't a bad thing. I'm guessing we updated the kernel and did not reboot the head node, and it cleaned out the old kernels, but we're still running on the old kernel until the reboot. So we will need to reboot the system and let it come back up 
and then we should be able to run that command. So that might just be a, that's one of those things that you might catch yourself on and not realize. You can also see that our kernels are 9.4 and I think we were making our, well, we called it 9.3. So we need to update some stuff. We probably need to go back and nuke a bunch of steps and go back. Or well, we can maybe leave the naming the way it is, but that's messy. Let's double check something once this finishes. Okay. Now if we go, well, let's do history. So we started here. Um, yeah, we called it Rocky 9.3, but that's not that big a deal. That's just the naming thing. So it should be fine. What happens if we run this command now? Okay, let's reboot and then we'll run that command. We'll be back in just a second. There we go. So that was all it was, is basically there was an old kernel that was still being referenced by the system because it hadn't rebooted after doing updates, which you should always do. And um, But now we're back in business. Okay, and then the last thing we're gonna install as part of this is a program called LMOD. Uh, LMOD, we will show off a little bit later when we get certain things uh, running. So in summary, what we have done as prepped Werewolf a little bit more, getting it ready to go for provisioning, and then building our essential image that will be put onto the compute nodes. Because you have to remember, we are using Werewolf in what's known as a stateless form, which you can do stateful, where it fully installs on a hard drive, or stateless, where it's like a temporary install and it goes away every time you reboot the machine so that it can pull a new image each time. I prefer stateless only because it makes things a lot easier to deal with if somebody uh, maybe run something on a compute node and breaks the system. You're not having to, you know, troubleshoot anything and try to save it. You just reboot it and let it blow it away, um, which I much prefer. Now, obviously, you can do stateful, but restall, reinstall on every boot. Um, but stateless is, I think, a little faster, honestly. Um, but I do know that there are some situations where stateless really isn't the way you want to go for certain I.O. requirements, I think, um, or maybe memory you want to keep. There's some more of that proc issue that we're going to ignore <laughs> for now. And then, like I said, we're, we're grabbing LMOD from OpenHPC uh, repo. And again, I'm using the OpenHPC repo because they have a great guide. And if you follow it, you'll get a cluster running. You don't have to. You can literally take their guide, figure out which repos you need to get the newer, the different versions of these patches, and they will deploy them out. Well, that's interesting. Something happened with the TCL package. Weird. But it installed okay. So we'll call that good. So that's it for this this episode. Um, like I said, we we got the werewolf provisioning configuration started and we got the image started. Up next will be um more prep provisioning and optional customizations that we will do. Um we're gonna do one in specific that I will specific that I will discuss. Um but uh We'll see you next time. Thanks and have a good one.